So I have a weak mechanical fuel pump on this that I am going to quickly rebuild. And I'll show you how I came to that conclusion. This is the mechanical fuel pump right here. Uh, why don't you zoom in? So this mechanical fuel pump uh, has two lines going uh, into it. Let's just follow on here. Okay, that's out. Uh, this is the in line, so this goes directly to the fuel tank. And um, so if I'm squeezing, if I'm squeezing this ball here, fuel is being pumped all the way in through here. It's also going right through there and it's coming out the out and going all the way around which goes into the bottom of the carburetor. So when you're squeezing that, you're literally passing fuel through the fuel pump and into the carburetor to fill up the bowl. The way this works, it's really, really simple. Um, there's a third hole, if you will, that's connected to the crankcase side. And as the piston is going up and down, uh, there's creating a, a vacuum inside the crankcase which is causing the fuel to be sucked in and then when the piston comes down it gets pushed out so inside here are a couple, di di couple diaphragms that only let fuel in on one and only let fuel out on another so it's like this not very hand coordinated you get the idea though it can only go one way very very simple so uh, i need to uh, replace this now how i first determined this was i um disconnected uh first off I, I squeezed the bulb to fill up the uh the bowl and then disconnected the fuel line from the carburetor so i could watch the flow of the fuel line as the thing was running then i started the engine and let the engine run just off the fuel that was in the bowl and i monitored the fuel that the pump should have been pumping out the fuel line to the carburetor and it was just a dribble so that was my first indication the second thing i did to verify it was I uh, went out and ran it, and I was pretty sure at wide open, the fuel pump would not be able to sustain the demand from the carburetor, and I was correct. I could maintain full throttle for a certain amount of time, uh, maybe uh, uh, you know 15 seconds, something like that. The, the carburetor bowl would, would drain and you'd start to starve for fuel. You wait a few minutes later, it would come back available. So I'm gonna take this apart. Okay, you can see that little, where's the, here we go. You can see this uh, little flange right here and uh, the two bolts that are holding it on and this uh, centerpiece here is uh, the hole. This is where the, uh, the pressure is coming from the crankcase which creates the, uh, the, the vacuum and pressure. Okay, so let's take this apart. It's not supposed to be more than finger tight. Uh, mine was, I actually had to loosen it with a screwdriver which is supposed to be a no-no, but uh, um, Let's pull it apart. This is the uh, fuel line coming in, and on the back side the screen. I'll show you the screen. There you can see the, the screen. There you go, good lighting on it. So of course, I'll take that apart, and that's uh, one of the lines. I don't know if it's the first line of defense, but it's uh, certainly one of them. So I will dig into this now, piece by piece, and I'll take it over the workbench to give you a better view. All right, so we'll just pull this out of here and disconnect the, uh, the exhaust fuel or the fuel outlet. and take it over to the bench. So here's an aftermarket uh, kit for this uh, Johnson outboard. It's a uh, fuel pump kit. This one's from Sierra. I'm guessing the kit is for more than one type of carburetor, so don't be alarmed if you don't need all the parts. All right, let's start taking this apart. This is a uh, gasket uh, cap to pump, is what they call this here.
Okay, so let's just take this and flip it over upside down like that. So let's look at this thing here. This is the diaphragm here. Yeah, you can see. That's completely toast. So this is a thing that goes in and out depending on the pressure inside the crankcase. And that's what draws fuel in from the fuel tank and pushes it out to the carburetor. And as you can see, it is uh, had a better day. Okay, I've got the fuel pump assembly mostly apart and I just wanna show you these two valves here. got one right here uh, that can only open that way uh, I'll just gently touch it with a so it can only go this way fuel can only go out that way so pressure from this side and this is the exact opposite it can only go that way and so as the uh, the chamber is changing its pressure it's drawing fuel in one orifice and pushing it out the other. It's such a simple design. I am kind of surprised to see that this isn't part of the kit. Uh, they don't replace uh, these little parts here. Maybe they don't wear out. I don't know. It looks like uh, all the parts that they have provided are all of the rubber uh, parts. So I'm starting the assembly here taking it very slowly and ensuring I'm reassembling the same way I found it, just with new parts. This is kind of finicky to assemble. It's a little bit like making a big Dagwood sandwich. What are the chances of me being able to uh, get any of this stuff lined up? Well, let's try with one. Uh, okay. Nope. So far, no. Oh, that's close. That is close. Oh, there we go. Okay, don't do anything with that. Just stay. Let's look at another one. This is actually the wrong hole, but right now I'm just using it as an alignment. See if I can get this to align as well. Okay, we're sort of ahead of the game here. We're doing okay. All right, let's get one. Let's get one of these in up at the front.
Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. There we go. My gosh, I think I might have it. Kind of finicky though, eh? This one goes in here at the back and I can see all the way through, which is encouraging. This one has to come out. This is uh, be used later to mount it to the uh, to the engine. I got one more here. I think I have it. I think I have it. Okay. So that will hold that in. That'll hold that in. You put a new one of these on here, something like that, but like that. Okay, so parts that I replaced are the diaphragm, this gasket, one of these, one of these, and one of these, and these two items. Only one of those. That's a spare, it looks like, for a different kit. So, New one of these, get rid of that one. I've already gotten rid of that, I've got rid of that. I've got this one installed, that's the old one. Got that installed, I've got that installed. This is the only last piece I have to uh, to put on. That's between, and this part will go right on here. And this is the, uh, where the air, yeah. This is where the uh, the vacuum and pressure from the crankcase caused the pump to, to work. So assuming I've installed it correctly, which is, I don't know, 50-50, it should work. So I'm going to, just about going to start reassembling this. I want to just show you this one more time. Um, I took the screen off, off camera, and took a look at it and cleaned it and put it back on. It was actually in pretty good shape. I'm just going to clean up this a little bit before I bring the uh, fuel pump back. And uh, then I will reconnect and I'll put the new gasket just on right here. So here's the fuel out and here's the fuel in. And there is the uh, the pressure from the uh, the crankcase. So we're just about done. All right, let's, uh, before we hook up that, let's hook up this again. Let's hook up the return or the, the line going out to the carburetor. All right, that's nice and tight there. Now we'll tuck it down in here like that. And uh, it's going to sit right in here. So let's get a couple bolts through there. And just hold those in a little bit. And then put a gasket, new gasket. You stay out of my way. Stay. We'll put the new gasket on there against that and the, uh, the block. And just sort of wiggle that into place. Can't quite see what I'm doing here. Oh, I'm close. That's looking pretty good. That one is starting. I think I got them both started. So these two bolts, all they do is they squeeze the, uh, uh, the gasket between the fuel pump and the crankcase to make it a, an airtight seal for the, uh, the pressure changes in the crankcase to affect this fuel pump. These four bolts, these brass colored bolts, are the ones which actually hold the fuel pump together. All right, so we have the fuel pump installed and we have the fuel exhaust or the fuel output to the carburetor installed. So we'll now install this gasket and we found it I don't know if this matters, but I found it like that. I'll put it back like that. And now the fuel inlet, this is from the gas tank, and it needs, this uh, part here needs to go between these two bolts. So we'll just give it a little adjustment there. Something like that. See if I can get it lined up to uh, thread. And although there's a... Um, uh, a bit on the end of this for a screwdriver. Everything I've read says that you do not use a screwdriver to tighten this up. So you just hand tight. 
That makes me a little nervous, but well, that's pretty tight. Uh, I wonder if I should cheat just a tiny little bit. There, I cheated a bit. Okay, well, um, can I go any tighter with my fingers? I cannot. So that is literally as tight as I can make it with my, uh, my hand. So this job is done, and I say that if it works. Let's find out if it works. One of the first uh, tests that we'll do before I run the engine is I want to see if it actually leaks. So I am going to put pressure to this right now. Okay, I can see this connection right here looks damp. The connection between this and the hose. Of course, I haven't spotted this yet. I'm on the other side. And it's leaking. Look at the back here. It's leaking. It's not supposed to be leaking, and it's leaking. It is leaking out the back. And it stopped. Why has it stopped leaking? Okay, that is a whole bunch of pressure, and it's not leaking. It's still leaking. Oh, it is leaking. Okay, that is way tighter than what it was. So that's one. It was leaking there. It is leaking, and it's, I've fixed part of it, but it's leaking right from the new gaskets. I'm going to put a lot of pressure in it. Here we go. I can't squeeze any more than that. But keep your eye on this here. Wow, where's it coming from? Oh, we got to stop that. I wonder how. That is the new gasket. I know it's under a lot of pressure there. I'm going to let that sit overnight and um, pressure it up again tomorrow. It's definitely leaking though. I, I got to think it's leaking down here too again, right there. So <laughs> So off camera, I replaced two or three hose straps with more robust hose clamps. That fixed the leaks at the connections. Regarding the gasket leaking, it just stopped. A day later, it didn't matter how much pressure I squeezed into this pump, I could not get the gasket to leak. Does that make any sense to anybody? Maybe the gasket needed to get damp and swell. Just guessing here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So now that the fuel pump is no longer leaking, let's see if it actually works. Okay, so the engine itself is running great, but like before, after the float bowl is empty, uh, the engine quits. So what I've done here is I've installed a little piece of a clear fuel tube so I can actually see what's actually happening here. And um, one of two things is happening. Either this uh, fuel pump that I just rebuilt is crap, in which case, and that's a 50-50, it's not like I know what I'm doing. Um, I'd rebuild it again. The other uh, option or item could be that the air is being introduced uh, to the fuel line and we're not getting pure fuel. And I might be correct with that. I'm gonna prime it. Watch this carefully. Like there is definitely air in that line. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to uh, fill up the bowl again and let it run. And for the first time, we're going to be able to watch. Yeah, it's filling up the bowl and the pressure is getting harder with the uh, air we go. Okay, so the bowl is full, meaning the needle inside the carburetor is closed off fuel flow. And um, we have air in the line here. I think I might have found the problem. So anyway, I'm going to run this. I'll run it until the, uh, the float bowl goes empty. I'll be able to monitor this line for the first time. I'll see if it's air and fuel or just fuel. And if it's air and fuel, then I'm gonna change tanks and I'm gonna um, try this again. So here goes. I've seen enough. There's air in here and there's not supposed to be any air in here. So I'm gonna change the connection at the fuel tank and I'll be right back. Okay, I've removed the uh, Johnson uh, 
the OMC Johnson connection, the fuel connection, where I think there was an air leak, and I've just put the uh, the hose right into the tank. So I'm going to see if we've solved the problem, meaning this is good. Find out in a minute. Throttle pulled all the way back and placed in forward gear. So the refurbished fuel pump is good. Uh, here is the culprit. Can you get in close enough to see this gap here? This was an air leak. And um, it's a brand new connection. There we go. But it was letting air in and that's what was being introduced into the line. We have this solved. New fuel pump moving fuel, and we found an air leak at the tank. It is wonderful to have this boat back in service. Hey, thanks for watching.